Good morning. Welcome, one and all, to Garden America. We are back in the saddle. The saddle being this studio here from the iHeart Media and Entertainment Studios in beautiful San Diego, California. Welcome, one and all, back with uh, yours truly, Brian Maine, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox. We are all here, ready to go. We trust you had a good week. We are into the new year, middle of uh, January, and a lot to talk about today. And uh, as John mentioned, and you mentioned, Tiger, no guest today. People just can't get enough of us for a couple of hours. Well, you know, after last week's little mix-up, I didn't want to run the risk of ruining someone's Saturday that took their time to call, uh, talk to us for an hour, you know, scheduled out their day, and then for us just to say, hey, it's not going to happen or it's not going to work out exactly as planned. So, And that was um, the first show of the year. Yeah, well, what, really? what a way to kick yeah. things oh, off, man. right? Yeah, oh. and it's been down to hell after that. Hey, but for those that hung in there, we thank you. We did not win the uh, lottery last no. night. Yeah. No, had we yeah. done that, we'd have had a new camera system. <laughs> or not been here today. Yeah. Or, or, not, not, been or here. not been here today. <laughs> exactly. But some people did hang in there. We had close to 50 people who watched our show on YouTube. Yeah, thank you very much. So thank you for that support. Our YouTube channel, Garden America Radio Show. Our website, that's where you want to go, GardenAmerica.com. You don't need the WWWs, as John has uh, said so many times over the years. But for this new streaming software, you need a very long web address. Remember, I was wow. RTMPS backslash Just to get us on the air, live video. Uppercase, lowercase. I, you know, yeah. th- that I think, like I said, I think that is the same code to get into Fort Knox. <laughs> Underscore, dash, letters, yep. numbers. Yep. About 25 or 30, right? I'm surprised they didn't throw an emoji in there. Don't give many ideas. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for being right there. A lot of people tuned in so far. John is here, ready to go for the next uh, hour or two. John, going to be here the whole show? I'm ready to start a big project at home. Yeah. Oh, please tell us. Tiger, with, with Tiger, right? Yeah, Tiger's going to come over. And you know what? Uh, your crew's going to be there doing work. Yep. You should be videoing them. Yeah, I will. And we should put a, post a lot of videos. I will. We've yeah. got some, some exciting stuff going on. So, Tiger, let me ask you this. Because yeah. I asked... Was it Daniel? He didn't quite know. So what's the difference, or how do you upload something on YouTube that's a short compared to the longer videos? A lot of people have those little shorts up there, 30, Uh 60, maybe two minutes at the most, because we should do some of that. Yeah, I mean, you know, those are just probably, I don't know. I will have to ask Daniel. I mean, if there's a difference, I think it's just a short video. Right, but there's a way to upload it, I think. Differently? That goes to that platform that's different than the regular video. Got it. So I'll find out. So it's YouTube's attempt to compete with TikTok and well, if you look Instagram at a lot of those videos, those. they say TikTok at the bottom. Right. So people have shared them on YouTube. And uh, they're just doing it multiple sources. Okay. So, uh, yeah, getting back to what John said, it would be great to have some video of that. And, right. and there's going to be some great tips at John's house for people uh, in general. Um, we're going to be doing some drainage work, which, you know, involves trying to get water away from the base of your house. Um, we're going to be doing some irrigation work, um, different Areas are going to require different irrigation, so we can tell people why we're using specific things in specific areas. Um, based it, based on the land, based on the slopes, land, based right. on what's going in the plant material, right? Um, and we're going to be doing some things, um, you know, top of slope, bottom slope, and we can tell people why we're doing those things as well. Um, because you know, for a lot of people, I think irrigation is very foreign to them. Right. It's almost it's almost like electric uh that's you know, exactly what in i was gonna home. say right. and, and for the most part you've always had somebody else do it to yeah. me so irrigation not... is just like electricity <laughs> <laughs> well you're right because it. you know what they have in common both should be grounded. ions they both have ions well, both should be grounded that's what i was going to say. <laughs> oh. but um I another like ions, another though. fun thing that we will be showing and i'll have to do a real good video on this is because of the layout of John's home, we're not tying back to a central clock. I mean, he's going to have valves here, valves there. We talk about how, how large his yard is. And to bring wiring back to the garage or the back of the home just right. to tie into a central clock doesn't always make that much sense um, because they have these battery-operated timers, and they're great. But a new thing, and you know, John instantly rolled his eyes at me when he – when I said this, but the new thing is that these <laughs> battery operated timers are um, be able to control via your phone. Via an oh, yeah. App. Well, most everything now you can right. use your phone but, to operate. And he was very concerned, and, and rightly so, about, oh, man, this is going to be a pain. I'm not going to know how to do this. It's going to be frustrating. But the, 
but the non but the non app version of the 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 clock is actually way more difficult to you know work with change right. modify John than all you have to app. do is use it a couple of two or three times and you'll have it down and yeah. you'll appreciate that app yeah we just got a new app here uh, at at uh, the station for our paychecks now when oh, you want yeah. to go in and see yeah. and I'm like oh really why can't I just go back onto the the old app but now oh I logged on it's beautiful it's all right there it's very simple and a lot of apps now give you the choice of facial recognition so you don't even need to remember your password right mm. yeah yeah who do you guys use for paychecks here they just touch ad they just changed ADP? It. say it again adp yes yeah we use them they just and, changed it to adp and we're going to start using their time clock thing which is again facial recognition all this right. stuff so when people punch it out i'm like right. this is amazing you oh, know? forget passwords. John, John can't punch out for John, anybody. Anymore. John's going back into the like the punching yeah. cards and yeah, they don't have those anymore. Nope, no, no more. I used nope. to like those. Yeah. Hey, uh, Carla says that uh, it was originally said that this was supposed to be another dry La Nina yeah, year. Yeah, right. You remember that? Yeah. Yep. And she said that's why she's told her daughter never date a weatherman. They can't be trusted. Yeah. But you're, I, you're very good, Carla. <laughs> but if I remember correctly, and I'll have to look this up, so don't quote me on it. But the farmers' almanac said it was going to be a wet year. Wet year. Yeah. So uh, I don't trust the farmers' almanac. Yeah, you've said that before, yeah. but, but they're, I don't they're know. They've been, right. they've been right. Wasn't that Benjamin Franklin? Didn't he have something to do no, with that? No, that was poor Richard's almanac. Oh, poor oh, Richard. Yeah, you're right. Who died poor as well? What's Did the difference? I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Poor Richard. <laughs> poor Richard. Look at him. <laughs> poor Richard. Yeah. Uh, the Farmer's Almanac. Yeah, John's yeah. not – he doesn't subscribe no, he to that, that publication. He doesn't believe in any of that right no, there. No, no. Yeah. So anyway, we're uh, uh, going to be planning a lot of different areas of the house, which will be cool because uh, I, I haven't seen one here in California. Uh, I've only seen them in Europe, but we're going to put in a knot garden. Mm -hmm. We talked about that. Yeah, and, and that's going to be fun. And then – I, I've got all my avocados now. I have six avocados, which I think is too many, because to build our house we knocked down yeah. <laughs> about a hundred avocados. Yeah. But I, I got six more, and they all look really good except the avozilla. <laughs> is that supposed to be the big one? No, I that, think I got taken on that. It, I really that, do. Is is that one more tropical, or no? I don't. You know, the one that I thought was more tropical, because uh, I don't know if I sh – I didn't show these to no, you when you, you were there because it was raining. But um, one showed up, and it had a Department of Agriculture sticker on it. And I thought, well, that's weird because the others came. There was nothing. nothing. Well, this one came from Puerto Rico. Oh. And it was the Marcus Pumpkin. Oh. And I thought, well, that one's going to be a West Indian one, maybe. And yeah. it's more tropical, but reading up on it, it said that it was actually hardy, really oh. hardy. Interesting. So, so yeah, I wonder if maybe the Avozilla is a bit more tropical. And that's why maybe right now it's not looking as good. I think it's where it came from. Also, I made. I was I was trying to to save money. I was actually being cheap is what I was doing. Yeah. And rather than get a grafted one, I got a seedling. Oh. All the other avocados I or bought grafted. were grafted. No. But no. this one I got a seedling because they said that it was it was pollinated under uh controlled conditions so it would produce the same as the parent. I was going to ask, why would you do that when we talk about seedlings, you know, not <laughs> being guaranteed, taking years to actually produce a fruit? In retrospect, yeah, <laughs> I would have paid the extra 20 bucks and got yeah. a grafted one. Yeah. Yeah, you oh, live man. and learn. You tried it. You yeah. won't do that next time. But the other ones that I got um, yeah. were from Etsy, and they all arrived in really good condition. Awesome. But you don't know where they all arrived from. Like meaning, it seems like they were from different sources. Well, one so you were surprised. The one that was one, from Puerto Rico. The others though. were from here in California. Oh, okay. Uh, trying to think of the the town now, but it's one guy apparently does a lot of grafting of rare cultivars. And any disclaimers as far as these were grown in a hot house or anything I, of that nature? No, okay. not that I noticed, but looking at the ones that came from uh, California looked to me like they might have come out of a hothouse. Because I was up at uh, Evergreen uh, uh, maybe a month ago now, um, and I went into their seedling house for citrus and avocados. And mm -hmm. they, you know, it's a very controlled environment. And it's out right. by you, 
So I could only imagine if you were to take those seedlings outside in your in your house right, right. now, they would be shocked. <laughs> but they're up close to the home. Yeah. So they all look pretty good. We're real close to a break. I know we have to get to the quote of the week. It wasn't a long one. It was only seven pages. So, <laughs> How quick can you do it, John? Or should we take a break? I, I can do it really quick. It's okay. a short one. Okay, go ahead. A garden is half made when it's well planned. The best gardener's the best one who does the most gardening by the winter fire. And that yep. was from? Liberty Hyde Bailey. Liberty Hyde Bailey. Yep. How come you don't have a name like that, Tiger? That'd be, that's a very a strong name. Like name. Okay, we're going to take a break for our friends on BizTalk Radio. Welcome those on BizTalk Radio for tuning in. Those on Facebook Live, it'll be a much quicker break. No guests today. It's going to be all of us talking about uh, what, what to do in this new year, planting, so on and so forth. And, of course, open comments for those on Facebook Live. Back after these messages on BizTalk Radio. Welcome back from that uh, break, Biz Talk Radio, Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us, Brian Maine, John Bagnesco, Tiger Palafox. Uh, open. Now we used to say open phones. Now we say open Facebook comments for those that want to talk about just ah. about anything heading into the new year. What's going on in your garden? Uh, success, failures. We're going to be talking about what we're doing, uh, setting things up for 2023. And John's got the well. John had the quote right from uh, Liberty. What, what was Liberty it? Hyde Bailey? Yeah. He wrote uh, Bailey's. Um, what is it, Bailey's Cyclopedia or Bailey's Hortica or something? Not to be confused with the like man who shot Liberty Valance, right? No, that's, no, no, that's, no. That's different. Do you know who sang that song? Uh, hold on. Uh, yes, Gene Pitney. Yeah. Wow, Way to go. I remember this, though. 24 Hours from Tulsa. Yeah, Gene Pitney, what a voice. Yeah, he had a really good voice. Yeah. He was, like, uh, comparable to Elvis, right? Now, that movie, what, 1960, 61? That's another another bit of trivia. Yeah, that was old. Hey, our um, our friends in Northern California, uh, Redding, are already saying it's rainy and windy up there. Right, hate the wind. Right, but our Arizona friends say that the sun is shining. Yeah. So I, I wonder if they've had a wet winter too, um, which would, I guess, bode well for all their spring flowers. Well. Now, Arizona, because, you know, the nor we, we've talked about this in the past, the northern part of Arizona, they get that monsoon. Yeah, it snows so, up so there. So do they get their cold. rain in the summer, and they don't get rain in the winter? I well, wonder. we do get, a, like in, in Arizona, Flagstaff, in the summer, at least once a day, a monsoon right. blows through. So they don't really care if they get no. winter rain, is what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got snow in Flagstaff. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, but it would. Always, but in the summertime, did I say winter? It's the summertime in Flagstaff. You get for like an hour. Right. It just pours right. and then blows through. Right. But yeah, in the wintertime, oh, it gets very cold. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of snow. So the reason feet. it doesn't rain in the winter is because it's snow. <laughs> it's frozen. Yeah, exactly. But it's higher than Denver. It's like 7,200 feet up in Flagstaff. I gave Tiger, I, I sent him... Um, a referral to someone who had just written a book on Arizona dry. gardening. Yeah, dry, dry gardening. Oh, really? Dry, dry gardening? gardening? right. And um, maybe we should have him yeah. or that person. I can't remember I'll, if it I'll was reach out. a he or a she. Yeah. We'll have to ask them what pronoun they prefer. You know, we should reach out to our, our listeners and viewers if there's anybody that they, they know of that they'd like to see or hear yeah. on our show. True. Send, uh, send yeah, me a note. Give us some ideas. John at GardenAmerica.com. Or just reach out to me via Facebook or Tiger, and yeah. send me a message. Maybe even better. Yeah, John gets a lot of emails, but you can reach out to directly to Tiger on Facebook. Yeah. And um, Carla loves Gene Pitney, by the way. <laughs> I'm not sure what that exactly means yeah. because uh, I gave a talk. Um, well, I, I, I don't want to identify this person on the radio. but Or Facebook Live, for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they liked... 
uh, who's the person that sang Lemon Tree? Lemon Tree? Uh, Tr uh, Trini Lopez. Trini Lopez. Okay. And <laughs> <laughs> I'd say I've been in the business a long time, Tiger. I used to be a top 40 disc jockey. <laughs> time, temperature, and weather, everybody. <laughs> but she was telling me that she dated Trini Lopez. Really? Yeah, in Vegas. Alexa, one night? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Dating involved. I dated him. 12 for, hours. For one night in Vegas. No, she said she dropped him. Ooh. But she said he was very nice. I think uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary also sang Lemon Tree. Because I know they sang Blowing in the Wind, which was Bob Dylan. Did they? they I think they might have had a – maybe not. Really? But we were right on with Trini Lopez. I think – uh, Trini Lopez also sang "If I If I Had a Hammer," right? Well, he did, but and so, I know, so and I know Peter for Paul sure. and Mary sang that. Exactly, maybe that's what you're thinking. Right, of. Yeah. That was the early '60s, the folk music scare of the early '60s. I remember hey. Mark Larson always used to talk about uh, uh, play an accordion and go to jail. <laughs> so, so trying to bring us back onto gardening. But, Way to go, but, Tiger! But you guys are talking about old music, so. There's this new article. I get all these articles about garden, garden centers, gardening in the news, trends, and things like that. And um, a, a popular trend that they're expecting to see uh, expand in 2023 is, I, what would you call it? Not aeroids in the sense of, you know, aeroids are orchids that don't need soil. But no, you know aeroids when, are philodendrons. Or you're thinking of epiphytes. Epiphytes, right. okay. But you know when they just put a fern on moss, you know, and different things right. like that. So so that whole, like, wall gardening, planting things just in moss. No not, dirt, not, no soil. The other word, the other thing is coca, cocodami? Is that the one where it's in the moss yeah. balls? Yeah, yeah. Right, not necessarily just like that, but just more almost like staghorn fern looking right. things. Right, right, That's supposed to be a whole new trend. And that just kind of brings me again back to I, what I envision house plants in the '60s and '70s were like, with the whole uh, macrame and all that stuff. Yeah, we had them in small pots in macrame hangers. Yeah. Did you did you have mac? You had macrame, yeah. right? Yeah. My wife made macrame on a television show. I'm not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> and you put the little beads every now and then with with oh, the yeah. macrame. Yeah. 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 The that 70s. The worst part about the 70s was everybody had avocado color paint. Oh, yeah. There's, there's a house in my neighborhood that has that on the exterior. By mistake or just as oh, old? Oh, no. It's a choice. <laughs> it's a, it's choice. a choice. They just repainted it the same color. Wow. <laughs> wow. It's Does it have any uh, – uh, is it all avocado? Is it all same color? All. There's no trim. No trim. Oh, the trim is like a brighter green. Yeah. It's interesting. Well, You're you going to move? <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on with um, fruit trees and uh, bare root roses? This coming year? in right now as we speak. Um, they're coming in. and Is there anything new in the way of fruit trees that you're going to have for the first time? You know, I, I've got to look at that. I didn't, I didn't do any uh, looking into what's coming in new. We, we always do have kind of new things. Um, again, moving more towards the dwarf varieties that can do well in a pot is still becoming more and more popular for right. us at least because you know our nurseries in the city and right. there's just not a lot of room to put a lot of trees right. so i think more people are interested in putting them in a container um but in terms of the roses also um a lot of a lot of roses are moving into the direction of a fragrance as far as what we saw the new ones um you know, are been advertising a lot more fragrance in the roses. I think that's just becoming a more popular trend there. Um, color wise, I haven't seen anything that was like, oh, that's pretty outstanding, new or different. We yeah. just harvested our harvested our citrus this oh, last did week. You? Wow, were they good? So good. I w I was shocked. You're talking about your tangerines, little, yeah, the mandarin, the little, little right? cutie mandar uh, yeah. mandarins. That yeah. was gold nugget, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That Dana's, was the one I told you to get. And and they were so good. Dana says, are you sure you grew these? <laughs> I if said, you yes, can only I did. Have he just, he just one peeled off the little cutie sticker. <laughs> and stuck him to the tree. Yeah. Here, these are good. No, they came out really, really good. Yeah, and as John was saying, if you can buy one man, one citrus, get gold nugget, right. mandarin, right. Yeah, you are the right. one yeah. to get. It's almost foolproof. You know, you can really be proud of yourself when well, you do harvest them. And in 
in terms of giving you what you want, I mean, it gives you an orange, it gives you a mandarin, it gives right. you an easy to eat fruit. It gives you a fruit, and normally when you're not always getting fruit, in the sense of it's January right yeah, now. We just harvested, yeah. you know, middle of January. And it's yeah. a long period of fruiting, right? Yeah. Right. Compared to other mandarins. It is. Yeah. Hey, we have to take a break for our friends on Biz Talk Radio. Those on Facebook Live, uh, questions, comments, we do see that it's raining in some areas of California. The rain is on its way south here to San Diego. So uh, buckle up, stay safe. Back after these messages, this is Garden America on Biz Talk Radio and Facebook Live. We are back from the break. Thank you for tuning in. However you uh, listen to us, uh, don't forget our website, GardenAmerica.com, our newsletter. You can sign up right there. We also have links to watch uh, various shows, digital, streaming, audio, of course, and, of course, our, uh, as we, how many times can I say, of course? We have our uh, YouTube channel, Garden America Radio Show, which is the same on our Facebook page. Do you remember a horse is a horse, of course, of course? Yeah, Mr. Red, Alan Young. Yeah. Connie Haynes was his wife. Oh, I didn't know that. And did you know Clint Eastwood was in a couple of those uh, shows? No, I did not. He was the next-door neighbor. Hmm. Learned something new every day. Um, so, back to gardening. Yeah, we were talking about uh, uh, fruit trees and roses. We were talking about fruit trees and roses. And, and new color, possibly. And we had, during our jumpy broadcast, John was explaining <laughs> the seeding of roses. And then that article... That was posted on our, our Facebook about the Jackson and Perkins article about seeding roses. It's pretty neat. That covers how to right. how they introduce new ones and process and all that. If you missed the show last week, that's also I really enjoyed the good, demonstration. Yeah, of, of the rose hips, cutting them open and planting the seeds. Yeah, well, you you both have those at home now, right? I do. Oh yeah, so they're ready to go. Pr- I probably two weeks. You said no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I I'm thinking that uh, probably by. Mid March, they should start germinating. All right. Okay, something to look forward to. Yeah, yeah, I am. The bird's nest is doing very well. In Did that, you... in that cactus succulent hanging basket. Oh, the bird nest bird. No, no, the the one that you gave me a couple of gotcha. two or three weeks ago. I'm thinking literal no, bird. Which uh, which I transplanted, and then of course it got all the rain. Yeah. It looks it look, looks like a big piece of lettuce. <laughs> hey, don't eat it. I, um, I have to do more research on this, but. Uh, I I told you guys that I got some roses from Japan yep. through Etsy, yeah. And one of them was called uh, Blue Dress. And looking at the research on it, I, I found a Japanese website, and you know that Google will translate websites for you, right? Yep. And it looks to me like this might have the blue gene in it. Okay. That. Remember, we, we've talked about this in the past, about how they took a gene from a delphinium and put it into a, spliced it into a rose because roses did not have uh, genes for the color blue, the delphinidin gene. So that's why there's no blue roses. But they did put this uh, in, and I think that maybe this is a rose that has that gene in it. But is it is it just, is it going to be... Entirely blue or just kind of shades of blue because that would mean a lot of money for the, the breeder, right? Right, but the, 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 uh, that gene doesn't express as blue in roses because of the pH of the rose flower. So that was, a, that was something they had to get over. But uh, could, re- you, could you do something like what they do with hydrangeas? No. No, you can't change the pH. You can't change the pH of the flower by it. It's like your body pH, you can't change it by what you eat. Right. Same thing. Okay. And if you do change your body pH, it's... It's going to mess up other things. Yeah, you're almost... It's Dead. Not go- it's never good. <laughs> yeah. It's, can it's easily never going to work out for you. It's not right. going to work. <laughs> so, if there was a blue so when, rose... So, you're, you're, you've ordered this rose? No, I have it. Oh, you have it now. I do have it, but I'm wondering... Uh, if that gene is in there, and if I breed with it, I n- remember that that may have been patented. So, 
um, I think it might be like the whole Monsanto thing with yeah. the corn. And yeah, you, the, you're going to get in trouble if you start. So you can't, yeah, bec- what you're saying is what you have has already been trademarked? Right. That, that right. particular gene. So, so you, you can't mess around with it and call it yours. He could mess around and call it yours, but he's just got to give credit credit and rights back to well i don't know if yeah i don't know if i have to do that or if they would take the whole thing you know what that's yeah. rose plagiarism is what that is <laughs> i don't know brian yeah um anyway it's that'll interesting. Be fun. it'll be fun i mean it might not it, even that gene might not even be there because it was a translation from japanese so who knows and you know when it comes down to some of these things i mean obviously fame and success is wonderful but at the same time um there's a lot of people out there that are just backyard hobbyists that they they have wonderful things in their collection. That yeah. The light yeah. of nobody in the public will ever see because it's their collection and it's what they did. And like what you just said, rather than coming out with it and running the risk of it turning into something right. terrible, right, right. they just rather keep it. Um, I don't know the name. You might know the name, John, but there's a person here in San Diego that works with geraniums a lot in what what they come up with with geraniums they do a lot for the geranium society and they've named a lot of them after people in san diego i can't remember their name but i mean i don't know geraniums are just very easy to to cross pollinate and then to produce new flowers and everything so it's just fun to see what they do and i mean you know if you do it out in your backyard and you just come up with this really neat looking flower yeah. it's fun just for yourself oh, yeah right sure Okay. John's going to have there the There was a blue guy rose. in Vista that bred geraniums. Is, is, it, is it that guy? I think so. I think that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. 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 I'm trying to think but of, think of his name. I think it it's, it's Stuart or something like that. I I don't recall at all. But So you're going to call it Blue Boy, the rose? Is that what you're calling it? I think there there are two roses called Blue Boy already. How about Little Boy Blue? Well, if it was a miniature, that would be you, a good name. You know what John's um name escapes me paul bunyan's ox babe he should call it babe because john really likes he's going after big flowers that's true and babe was a big blue ox now look at you with that storybook history <laughs> right yeah well i don't wow. know music but give me give me fairy give me children tales rhymes. Yeah, give me give children fairy tales. Rhymes. he's good yeah, right he's great at fairy tales <laughs> the um there's a rose called paul bunyan is there yeah see that's like that's like that's the rose john wants right there he wants something big that can swing an axe. I donated one of those to the Pacific Auction, which is coming up, which is coming up the end of the month. By the way, I think it's the first Saturday in February, and I won't be here, guys. Okay. So if you want to mark that on your calendar. All right. All right. <laughs> we're just, we don't know so anytime you're supposed to show you, up. <laughs> we didn't know you were here today. Yeah. <laughs> There was it's always a, a surprise. I gave a talk to the Pacific Rose Society last Wednesday, and one of the roses that I put up was a rose called Fugetsu. And sounds Italian for something. <laughs> Fugetsu. Yeah. No, it does. it's actually Japanese, Fugetsu. So um, somebody, and I told people I got it on uh, from Etsy, uh-huh. and I said, The rose looks good, but I can't tell you if it's going to come out the way the picture was, uh, because it if you if you Google Fugetsu, which is F U G E T S U, you're going to see a rose that is one color, and then there's another color like just thrown here and there, like one section of the rose. But on another rose, it'll be in a different section. Really? Yeah. Oh, interesting. So anyway, during the after the um, the talk was over, uh, these people came up to me and they said, um, oh, we really enjoyed the talk. We liked learning about everything. My husband got on Etsy and got one of those Fugetsu roses. Oh, my goodness. She said there were three left, and he got one of them. We have some suggestions. Okay. I think for Let's shows, guests. Uh, Gerald Stewart. Gerald Stewart. He's the one. Yeah. Oh. Leanne Kim. Thank you. Yeah. The, the, the geranium. Right. Gerald Stewart. Ger- the geranium breeder. And Carla suggests a show on geraniums would be good. Also camellias. Well, we've done shows on geraniums sure. before. Yeah. and um, We can combine a few during the same show. Well, I was thinking the person that we've um, had on the show is probably one of the world's leading experts on geraniums. Uh, 
Her name is Robin. Oh, my mind just went bank blank, but she's the owner of Geraney AC. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, we've yeah. had her, and then there's another guy who uh, we did a show on Salvias. I don't know why that popped into my, my mind. <coughs> but anyway, um, yeah, I like geraniums. Um, and by geraniums, we're usually talking pelargoniums. Pelargonium. Yeah. Do you still have that one pelargonium I gave I do. you? It should be coming into bloom now, right? I will have to look. I planted it. <laughs> do you um, know where it is? No. <laughs> but it has a tag, and I can find that. Kept one. the tag on. Yeah, yeah. I Good made man. the tag. I made the tag. Well, if, yeah, with um, your little with my little tag machine. Tag machine. Exactly. You have what half an acre? Uh, probably right around there. Yeah. Yeah, and, and he get, can't find anything. Yeah, things <laughs> he, get lost. He plants it. But he just doesn't know where it is. Yeah, uh, a lot of things planted very close together. No, um, I don't no, think so. He's got no. things well spaced. Yeah, yeah, I've got things spread out, and I I like to. So I have my collection plants tucked in places where I know they're going to do well. Like my focus with right, my collection right. plants are more it's going to do well here versus right. I want it here so I can see it. Right. right. Um, so then the problem is is that I plant other plants that aren't collecting plants around them, and then my, my, my unique plants sometimes just get mixed in. And I don't find them as easy. We have to take a break on that note. Thank you. A quick break, a bit longer on Biz Talk Radio. This is for Biz Talk Radio. Those on Facebook Live will be back a bit quicker. Uh, thank you for, um, oh, Lila. Sorry, Lila. Okay, Lila with the uh, new about uh, Gerald Stewart. Great. We're going to take a break. Back after these messages. Thank you for your support on Biz Talk Radio. Okay, we are back from the break, as uh, you can see on Facebook Live. And to those on Biz Talk Radio, thank you for tuning in. This is the final segment of our number one. Hopefully you do carry our number two in your market. You'll have news coming up top of the hour. We're back at six minutes after. In the meantime, uh, we've got more suggestions. Yeah, Carla also mentioned uh, camellias, and we've done shows on camellias with uh, the Nucios, the right? Nucios, yeah. yeah. We've had, um, I, I think, Tom it. Nucio on right. before, we'll and we've had again. Julio Nucio years ago yeah we've had a lot of people over the years i'm uh, trying to think oh, um I... a question that i was just thinking of and we were just talking about it off air um what seed companies do people out there go to to buy their seeds you know you you you've mentioned what was it lake valley right now like what was the one that you just mentioned lake valley the owner you mentioned botanical right. interests and lake uh a salesman for Lake Valley Seed Company was yeah. the person who started Botanical Interest. But I mean, you know, that through the years, there's you know, Barry Morris, there's Thompson, Burpees, Botanical probably Interest, probably the most Burpees, yeah, Burpees Renee's, and, yeah, um, San Diego Seed Company. Burpee um, was the one who, who, uh, in it was on comic books too. I think yeah. Brian, yeah, that in the back it, of the comic book. Yeah, if you came up with a white marigold. They were offering you ten thousand dollars, <laughs> and for years, that's fun. People were trying, yeah, and ten thousand yeah, dollars a lot of money back, back then, then was yeah. a lot, and and eventually they gave the ten thousand dollars. But I think it was like twenty years it took for somebody to Come up with develop white, white marigolds, and then they're not really very popular. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah, like, they're right? kind of worthless. Like, Why do you want them? Why, you, know, you can plant something else that's white. It, it kind of defeats the point of a marigold, right? Isn't? Yeah. I mean, for most people, I think marigolds are. You know, orange and or yellow. yellow yeah. and the reason why you plant them is the orange and the yellow color. Right, right. You, know, you don't plant them for white. Yeah. It's funny. So the, the, did the 10 – it took how many years, did you say? I think about 20 years, as I recall. So did they adjust the uh, the price for inflation? Back so then, there wasn't inflation. Ah, yeah. okay. 
That's uh, a recent invention, Brian. <laughs> recent invention. But we, we I were, think Jimmy Carter invented it. So this we, was prior to him. We were just talking about seeds at work, and um, so my dad, you know, who's kind of old school nursery man, was like, "Oh, just, you know, we need we need to get some Ferry Morris in here." And I was like, "All right, I like I I see it. Ferry Morris, it's a big brand. They're gonna have a lot of options." Not. Easy to some degree to work with. You just order it and forget about it. Their headquarters is in Paducah, Kentucky. Oh, perfect. Good to know. Actually, (laughs) it's really a suburb of – it's really Fulton, Kentucky, which is a suburb of Paducah. Wow. (laughs) You're just full of it, aren't you? (laughs) um, I've been there. But but it's really funny because I was was looking at their website, and and they said new for 2023. And, you know, I'm thinking they might have a white marigold or something kind of unique or different. Their tomato, new for 2023, yeah. was yellow pear and brandy wine red. Oh, a, Come on. Really? They... A lot of times when companies promote new, they're promoting new for them. New for them. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. And it's just, yeah. it's, that's not new at all. I mean, yeah. you might as well put early girl up there, <laughs> you know? And yeah. So, you know, because we're, I'm looking for, I mean, and there's that, uh, there's specifically tomatoes, um, boar, wild boar farms, wild boar farms. Yeah, uh, seed company too, who right. does a lot of really neat tomatoes for tomato mania. A lot of people get unique seeds um, from them. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm just wondering. I worked who, with him a lot. Who get who 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 do you all out there buy seeds from? And and I definitely feel seeds are one of those things that people buy online because they're so easy. You just go online. You, you can find what you want. Right. They cost nothing to ship to you, and they don't mark up the seed at all. The seed package is, is you know, $3, and you don't have a problem ordering seven packs at a time or whatever sure. it is. Sure. You see Scott's comment? I, I do, and I was going to get to that. I was going to mention that um, the seeds used to be the most profitable item in a garden center. Yeah. It was the highest sales per square foot of any item that you had, and – you didn't pay for them until after they were sold. Oh, yeah. really? Okay. Right. But they, they introduced the pay per, per scan or pay per <laughs> sell thing. Right wow. There. Well, yeah. it was at the end of the season. It wasn't even yeah. pay by scan, scan back it just, then. It was the end of the they, season. They, they go out. They look at the rack. This is what you sold. And they then bill you for what was sold. Right. Take and back when I was else. a seed buyer for Frank's Nursery, our discount from the seed companies was less 50. Yeah. Less 20, less 10. Oh, boy. Less 5. Yeah. So it was like they're almost giving them to you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay, our our, uh, our friend Scott in Pennsylvania. Hey, Scott. Good morning. Who says that um, he just sowed a trial of strawberry blonde marigold seed oh. from Harris Seed Company. What, is this? what does that look and like? And he said the marigolds change color based on the temperature. Really? Yeah, and I'm sure he's talking about the growing season, not yeah. not the snowy season, because <laughs> we know what color they'd be then, brown. Um, Gina, brown. <laughs> Gina mentions uh, Johnny Seeds, which is— Oh, Johnny? Yeah, I Johnny's— They're more commercial, though, right? They're more for, uh, yeah, the professional gardener, yeah. far, small farms, things like that. And then— uh, Strawberry least, blonde— Marigold, it's kind of a a pastel, an orangey pastel kind of a color. It's kind of cool. Well, he says it changes colors with the temperature. No, and they have different ones. Like it seems like they're different, and that's that's really neat. I don't, th- I don't think I've really ever seen that mix. I'll I never heard of that it. either. Yeah. Uh, Lisa mentions Territorial Seed Company up in Oregon. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, they're huge. Territorial. And they work a lot with um, our friend Alice from Lockhouse Plants. And uh, come up with a lot of new things. They're always looking for new stuff. So territorial is really good. Yeah. Territorial seed. I remember you you told me about them a while back, and they have really neat, unique stuff, like you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. They're also one of the few places you can order grafted tomatoes right now from. Because I don't think... um, Gardner Supply is no, doing it this nope, year, right? they're not doing it, yeah. I'm trying to think of the owner of 
Uh, Brad Gates is the owner of Wild Boar Farms. Yeah. And um, we did a lot of work with Brad trying to stabilize his tomato seeds because once his seeds are open pollinated and once you have open pollinated seeds, you know, we talk about how you don't always get the same thing. So with tomatoes, right. you have to stabilize the line before it can can be uh, before it'll come true from seed. Right. Okay, we're going to take a break. We've got news coming up uh, for our friends on Biz Talk Radio, top of the hour. We're back at six minutes after. If you can uh, do your best to find us, if your market does not carry you, uh, you can ask Alexa to play Garden America Radio Show, and she'll do that. We've got our uh, webpage, GardenAmerica.com, and of course our YouTube channel, Garden America Radio Show. We're going to be back after a rather short break on Facebook Live, a bit longer for news on Biz Talk Radio. Do stay with us. This is Garden America. All right, we are back from that break. Uh, those on Biz Talk Radio, thank you for joining us. Those on Facebook Live, thank you for the questions, the comments, a lot of seed comments as we head into uh, this portion of the show, John, and a lot of familiar names that we've talked about. Yeah, there's there's so many different seed companies and a lot of specialty seeds. Uh, who what was the name of the uh, seed company uh, that it specialized in the African seeds? Remember, we had him. I think it was during COVID we yeah. had him on. Uh, yeah. Um, not down to earth. Uh, something like seedmen.com or yeah, something like something that. like that. Right. Yeah. Um, I have some trees the, in my it, yard now that came from well, them. And that is the cool thing about seeds, too, is you can order seeds from other parts of the world, get them relatively easily. Right. And um, next thing you know, you have a plant that nobody else has near you because, you know, it's just not common here. And right. It, it'll still... What would you say for Southern California, you you could be ordering plants from, you know, South Africa, Italy, anywhere in the Mediterranean. So seeds for plants from there. Is that what you're you're saying? Seeds for plants. What right. did I say? You said yeah. plants. Oh yes, they you can grow the plant can grow. Right. But they can be grown from seed. You know, anywhere across the Mediterranean. Um, yeah, and seeds and, you can ship all over the world. Yeah. Because you're not transmitting. Uh, Soil insects or diseases right. yeah. usually you see what uh, your mom just posted no fausto tells us john that you were the king of seed buyers at one time <laughs> yeah he, yeah he just said i was yeah. the largest um consumer per purchaser <laughs> of seeds in the united states yeah. if not the world at one time yeah at least for retail not i don't know about agriculture but but for retail frank's nursery used to have a uh, thirty-foot uh, aisle of seeds, both sides, and, and they were no so, repeats. <laughs> and they were so big that we hired our own people to service the seeds. They would go around from store to store. And and so here's the thing that so that's the difference. Okay, in our our industry, we talk bare root first off. Mm -hmm. Bare root used to be a thing where you used to come into a nursery in January and February when things right. were bare root. Used to Look in these bins of 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 uh, sh uh, shavings, wood wood shavings, right? Um, and you used to pull out your rose or your fruit tree. Didn't have any soil on it. You took it home. You got a deal on it, um, and it would in incentivize people to start early. Okay, that that kind of faded away, especially in Southern California because things just grew so so quickly that you couldn't bear root it for very long. You had to can it up. Well, plus. Customers would always come by, pull them out, and leave them there. Leave them out. <laughs> Plant would die. Exactly. So, so that kind of faded away. Bulbs, you know, bulbs are another thing that, you know, used to be able to go to grocery stores and they'd have racks of different bulbs. Right. Bulbs are very popular to plant. Um, for whatever reason, they aren't as popular anymore because you know maybe it's just people want instant gratification. They don't want to plan for bulbs. They don't want to buy the bulbs. And where I'm going with the difference in bulbs and seeds is is that bulbs are a little pricey compared to a package of seeds where, you know, you could be buying a bulb and it could cost you a couple dollars for some bulbs or 99 cents or something. So you'd still as much as a plant is in people's eyes, but you have to wait for it. I think the difference with seeds is, is the packages are still only two, three dollars and people don't mind grabbing 
eight, nine packs of something. And then, like we say, then they just sit in their drawer. They never yeah. get planted, but the, the, well, the yeah, intention they, was there. Multi-purpose, you know? they can be space fillers in, in uh, kitchen drawers, <laughs> desk drawers. You know but ten, 10 years ago, same thing happened to me. I bought all these seeds. Yeah. Put them in drawers. Yeah. Forgot about them. Yeah. Open the drawers. Oh, yeah. Where where did we go where you got those free seeds? I bet you still have some of those. <laughs> no, I don't, but maybe those are the ones I'm referring to. Wasn't yeah. that in Ohio? It was. It was at uh, some farm show, we right? We went to a big outdoor bazaar yeah. farm show. Yeah, it was a farm show. Tractors and yeah, all kinds tractors of things. And, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. I just feel people yeah. – their mind with seeds is doesn't isn't in the same place as plants. No, it's different. You're it's, right. It's different. Well, seeds are impulse items yeah. because people are looking at the pictures, and the picture conveys immediately, "I'm going to get this," without and skips over all the work involved in mm-hmm. between. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think that uh, what happened to bulbs is not so much people losing interest. I'm definitely that was part of it, but I think the big box stores. Uh, ruined the bulb industry by, uh, in Southern California, I'm talking about, by bringing in all the Dutch bulbs, which don't do well here. Yeah. Uh, many of them they don't. They looked cool. Like you're saying, they yeah. saw the picture, they saw the flower, and they're like, I really want that. Yeah. They planted it, and it petered out. Tulips come to mind. Yeah. yeah. The, the tulips just are not good for Southern California. But all the South African bulbs, which do, are uh, great for Southern California just aren't available anymore. Yeah. One was the Watsonia, which I have coming up now from Carla. Uh, thank you, Carla. Um, and you do too. Yeah, I found it. Did you I really? I found it. Yep. All right. Yeah, I'm excited. So. so probably about a foot tall now, right? Yep. Yeah, exactly. It was mixed in with some of my paper whites. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lisa says she has 80 bulbs that she hasn't planted yet. Oh, really? Lisa, are they because they're being stored and refrigerated, or you just haven't gotten the time? I wonder. Well, with all the, thing, the rain up there. Because that's the thing with bulbs, too. Sometimes there's some planting involved, right? Well, Refrigeration, yeah, you don't storage. Just, unlike seeds, Yeah. You, you don't just put it in the ground. You know, in, in well, that's, you know, I've been trying for years to get a lot of California poppies and wildflower seeds to come up in my canyon across because i have this beautiful canyon in my backyard and i look across to the other side of the canyon so for years i used to take whatever seeds we had left over that were california native and just broadcast them it's not working i don't know what it, i don't know what's happening but it's not working well we yeah. got some more rain coming i've yeah. got a lot a lot of uh uh african daisies and california poppies coming up right now <laughs> john I, I was at john's house and he was they were discussing with shannon about what want to plant and where and it was so funny because she had mentioned <laughs> oh, african God. daisies she had made in in john and it just so funny from what i heard from the discussion was i planted those for you to see them and then she's like yeah and now i like them and john's like well you can't have them <laughs> <laughs> you can't have them i wish i could say tiger was exaggerating that story but that's pretty much how it went <laughs> yeah. well a lot of times, uh, people who aren't as knowledgeable <laughs> as us will look at something and just say, I like it. And because but, they're looking at it in its prime, usually, right. too. Right, and there's there's problems with, she likes the um, osteospermum, right? Right. Which, which are nice, but they get kind of weedy, yep. uh, thick. They uh, attract har- a ton of snails right. and slugs right. and all that stuff. So I don't, so I put them there, and I also planted some of the new um, proven winners, different colors, you yeah. know, like 3D and. But, and but, but if you want to plant a lot of those, you're gonna break the bank. <laughs> yeah, you they're see Carla's expensive. last comment there. Are we gonna discuss what to do in the garden for January? So far, my list is <laughs> stay in the house and don't go outside. You. Yeah, I mean, for for most people in California, this is kind of a unique thing for us where we're being forced to not start the garden yet, right? Yeah, you you should be if you're going to have vegetables. You know, you can actually seed things right Right now now. that's still winter crops, right? And all the lettuces, all the uh, leafy crops can go in now. And California natives and shrubs and trees, plant them now. 
because they love this. Place. Yeah, they. This is not bad for new plantings, right? Um, I mean, the only thing that I would say you could possibly make a mistake on is overwatering, but we've talked about how rainwater is so much different that it's yeah. very difficult to overwater with rainwater versus if you're overwatering with your tap water. Right. And so, you know, turn off your irrigation system, just let it naturally do its thing. You know, I'm wondering, uh, I don't know if you noticed when you came in the front door, but I had two, um, two pots and they had the uh, uh, Alberta spruce in them yep. at the front. I saw. Uh, there's no drainage in those. Oh, what? Yeah. How are they still? <laughs> well, you've, had, you've had like two weeks of rain. <laughs> well, I'm wondering. They've got it has the reservoir in the bottom, you know, to <laughs> be self-watering. But I'm wondering if I should put trash bags over those when I get home. Yes, yeah. we're going to have a lot of rain coming there's up. No way to it. dump it out. Like you can't. They they weren't huge, right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'll have to think about it. You know, and um, we got to take a break. Okay, but hold hold on to that yes, thought. Yes, I do. All right. uh, this break is for our friends on Biz Talk Radio. Do stay with us, and thank you for the comments. We'll get to as many as we can right there on Facebook Live. Thank you for tuning in and enjoying this edition, this particular show of Garden America. We are back from the break. Had to interrupt Tiger before the break. Did you finish your thought, Tiger? I want to make sure we're, yeah, I, I, we're no, back I was, live. I was uh, talking with John, and, you know, those plants, because he has these decorative, they're, they're right. the conical-shaped kind of Alberta spruces yeah. in these pots. It's a dwarf spruce. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people will use that. They'll use a rosemary. Um, you know, some people will use little cypresses and junipers. And when they, a lot of times when you overwater or begin to rot, they'll, they'll have that splotchy dead growth happening in the plant, which, you know, part of the plants, like, die as part of this whole overwatering process, root rot issue. And it, it's a bummer because you'd almost rather have the whole plant dead because yeah, it gives— Now it, you see some hope. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> There's like, hope, I like, think. Like, when you just see kind of, like, this corner of the plant dead, you, you're like, oh, you just I just trim it out, and this re the rest of the right. plant looks good. Maybe it'll come back. It doesn't ever come back. It never looks the same. So I'd rather just have the whole plant die. Yeah, sure. And just be, okay, give up on it. Yeah. Rick wants to know what part of the country they produce seeds in Ooh. as a crop. Yeah, well, I mean, Lompoc is a huge, huge. area in California. Yeah, Central where, California. Central Valley. Yeah. Where, yeah, a lot of the uh, or ornamental seeds come from for all over the country. And then some seeds are produced in... Um, Central America, mm -hmm. uh, but it just depends on what the crop is. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Whaley, I think we've had him on the show before. Yes. Uh, AP Whaley Seeds uh, produces actually produces some seeds in Wisconsin. Depends wow. depends what and it is. The neat thing about um, seed growers or producers or brokers, they can have multiple places producing because they can have people growing them in their ideal environments and they just harvest and then ship them off to you know warehouses and they collect their seeds from everywhere each one grown in that particular region yeah right? yeah so um you know in and, and there's a lot of discussion i know with uh, rehabilitation places uh specifically in california we have a lot of fire prone areas and they try to rehab the areas with seeds um they want to make sure they get seeds from that environment, that elevation, all of that kind of thing. Um, but for the general home gardener, I don't think that's as important to them. I mean, it's just – it's a seed, right. and it as long as this plant grows well in your area, it'll grow well. But I know that um, some native restoration rehab places really want the seed to come from that area, but not as important for home gardeners. So what else uh, do you do this time of year? Um, turn off your water if you're in California. Yeah, turn the water off. You know, we talked about overwatering. And, it, and it's a good time to check the irrigation system, too, making sure it's working properly and everything's getting— How can you check and see if it's working properly you, if it's you can, turned off? You can turn it on and you can uh, see 
if and, there's and, problems. And would this be like testing to see that the pressure is equal? Pressure is equal. You have any leaks? Right. Um, you have any? Yeah. Heads talk that about are wasting not. water. That that testing for leaks has got to be high in the list. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that can waste a lot of water. I was just at a, a house. Um, they had us come out to do an irrigation audit and re rehab. Um, and we calculated out every time they were running the irrigation system, they were wasting 50% of the water because they had emitters going to plants that weren't there anymore. Mm -hmm. They had leaks in the system. They had all kinds of stuff that it was just half of their water was going nowhere that it needed to go. It just hurts. Yeah. So, um, yeah, irrigation, want to do that now. Um, what else, John? Well, I was uh – I'm just looking at a note here from Linda, and she said that she's not sure if it's burpee, but she said there's a new zucchini called Rise and Shine Ooh. that grows vertically. <laughs> there's so many. That's the name. There's so many ways that can go, right? That's a great idea, though, right? Yeah. A climbing zucchini. Yeah. I'll have to look that up. <laughs> Rick says he so used to, to go. Fertilize it. Fertilize it with uh, Viagra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rick says he used to go to the uh, Huntington Library in Descanso Gardens to collect camellia seeds. <laughs> <laughs> well, both uh, those gardens are oh. known for their camellias, yeah. right? Beautiful. Beautiful. It, uh, we went to Nucio's and thinking two years ago or three years ago now and bought some camellias. And one that I got was the fishtail camellia. Yeah. Are you familiar with that? Uh, you, I remember you told us about it. I remember you, when okay. you went up this. At the base of that, uh, a seedling is coming up. So Really? The, yeah, so the must have set seed. It's still in a pot, uh, and it must have set seeds, and, you know, the seed pods drop down, and one's, one's coming up. That's cool. Hmm. It's fun. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if it— What uh, actually it turns into. If it fishtails like the, yeah. the other one. Um, John's catching up on the comments. Well, I was going to look for that rise Trim and shine zucchini. Trimming, trimming is a big thing right now. Okay, um, for Southern California and the West Coast, we're getting into our coldest month. So mm -hmm. pruning, you know, you're pruning your stone fruits, you're pruning your deciduous plants and roses, trees, you're roses, pruning, you're pruning your roses. Um, so that's a big thing to do right now, and that could even be done in the rain. I don't, you know, yeah. you you get a little break in the rain, rain. You get outside. You can do some trimming. You can do some pruning. Um, save those, save those branches for your uh, hugel hugel culture beds. <laughs> <laughs> um, so pruning right now is also top to do. Do you remember what they did with the uh, uh, branches in England? Yeah, they made um, trellises. They. They, yeah, we'll lay them out in the in their flower beds in yeah. the spring for perennials that are dormant, and then when they come up, it would be almost supports. like supports. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. No, really cool um, things that you could do with just the leftover branches and stems. Um, and there's, I mean, for for the fruit tree and deciduous tree branches and stems, John. I mean. It's more the foliage that you're worried about introducing any kind of disease, right? When they tell you to rake up the leaves and all of that, uh, the branches and stems, not as big a deal? Yeah, not as big a deal unless you're putting in something that's got scale. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, Time to prune wisteria? Yeah, yeah. It goes right there along with any kind of deciduous plant. Um Time to prune wisteria. It's a nice time to see the structure of the oh, wisteria. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I don't know if I agree with that. No? No. And the reason uh, it's – this is something that we wanted to talk about uh, is pruning spring flowering shrubs. Oh, yeah. If you're pruning them, you're cutting off all the flowers. New growth. So you, you prune spring flowering shrubs right after they finish blooming. Yeah. Now, th now that doesn't mean you can't go through and prune it. I mean, right. you could, but – you for the are best cut, result, are and, cutting flowers off. And if I remember correctly, aren't there also a couple different varieties of wisteria that some are spring flowering and some are are different? Or no, they're all the same. That you, they're not all the same, I mean, but, but there are some wisteria that all wisteria bloom in the spring, 
but there are some that come back with a repeat bloom, that's even what it, though it's not as that showy as in the spring. There's some repeat bloomers, right? And there's some that just bloom right. in the first one. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing with uh, lilacs. Now there's some lilacs that also have a fall bloom. Yeah. It is break time once again. How about that? We have two more segments to go. So we'll take a break for our friends on BizTalk Radio. The rest of you on Facebook Live, keep the questions, the comments coming as we really heating up right now. What to do in January, February, winter months here on Garden America. We're back after these messages on BizTalk Radio. All right, we are back. We have uh, two more segments. This will be the last longer segment, so plenty of time to get involved there on Facebook Live. Questions, comments. Uh, John Clements says he always uh, does his wisteria after the bloom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. John knows what he's doing. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he, he, John does know what he's doing. Right. And, you know, speaking of John, too, I mean, right now is a great time to call your arborist and take your – have your trees looked at. Yearly um, physical for your trees. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And um, if it, it's going to be hard to get a hold of them now because so many storms everywhere, right. but um, get them on the calendar and try to prevent any kind of damage right. that may be caused. We if, were we were um, at soccer practice the other night, and it wasn't even stormy. It was just we were at soccer practice in the evening, and all of a sudden we just hear this pop and crash from one of the eucalyptus trees nearby, and it was a good sized branch that could be equal to a small tree itself uh, that came would have down. done a lot of damage if somebody was underneath oh it. big yeah, time right would've. yeah so i mean it, it sometimes just after a storm something weakens it and then later on it can fall so you know this i used to have that trouble with cowrie tr the cowrie tree in my yeah. backyard because they're self-pruning <laughs> and you'll have huge branches just drop they don't give down. you a warning no y years ago years ago one of the first places i rented in San Diego when I came back from college. So there was an out, outside driveway, and there was a, I forget the, the kind of tree, big tree overhang. After about two or three it's months. It's a gardening show. You really shouldn't <laughs> be saying big trees. Big trees? <laughs> Unless you're talking about sequoias. Okay, this was a, 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 a large tree, not a big tree. <laughs> okay. Fairly large tree. Anyway, so it hung over the driveway. So I wake up one morning, and a huge branch or a good part of the tree fell on my car. On your car? On my car. Oh, How much no. damage? So the roof, there's a dent in the roof, right? And you can you can see the car. Windows but, broken? What's that? Windows broken? Don't think so. Okay. But you could see the car, but you had to kind of make your way through. So I called the landlord right away. So he gets an insurance company out there. So I'm sitting in the living room, and they're asking me all these questions like, well, didn't you think the tree might have need, needed trimming? I'm like, what? Well, you should have known that the brand. I'm like, okay, stop right there. I don't own this house. Yeah. Okay. It's not my tree. I don't know really anything about trees. What they were trying to do is not pay. Right. So right. eventually I just gave him, I was truthful and gave him all the right answers. But I just rem remember them grilling me like, well, you should have known that this uh, branch, if you should have trimmed the tree and this wouldn't have happened, they ended up paying. Yeah. But I just recall speaking of branches falling, it's like, my goodness, really? I don't own this house. I, I just, I rent it. Did they People? ask you if you had gotten your degree <laughs> in yeah, arboriculture? Really. Uh, are you, aren't, sir, aren't you an arborist? Yeah. You, you would have known that. People don't also realize the weight of yeah, that's true. a tree until it comes down. Or just the weight of a branch. Of a branch. Right. Um, and we talked about this, too, in the past. The, the weight of those uh, seed pods for queen palms, palm trees. Right. You know, when you have that <laughs> big hanging seed collection when when that comes down the if you try to lift that up when it's on the ground you got to cut it up and haul it away man, right man so massive so much weight <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't ask your son to catch it in a trash can right don't 
So, yeah, yeah, good job on that. If you're in North San Diego County and you need any tree trimming done, yeah. call Green Gorilla Tree Trimmers, right? right? Green Gorilla. Exactly. Yeah. John has taught them well. <laughs> no, I had nothing yeah. to do with that. So, John, last week you gave me uh, those clippers, pruners. Yeah. When what what's the make and model? What is it? Those They're, are Felcos. Okay, Felcos, which is Felcos, a v- right. very high end brand, right? Yep. What's that? Swiss. Swiss. Yeah, high end brand. Okay, yeah. they're older. They got some rust on them. I'm I'm happy as heck. I tried them out. Wow, those are better butter. than going out to buy brand new clippers that have never been used. Yeah, those things clip even. They clip quick. There's no you don't have to fight with it. I, I tried cutting a tree with those things, and Brian, I was almost Brian, successful. Brian's been using his uh, oh cheap Walmart. Harbor Harbor Freight brand uh, I, I'm, pruners. Yeah, it's yeah. bad. These are good clippers. Nice. Well, Tony says that now's the time to clean your tools, right? That's what we're minded. Sharpen me. those up. Yeah. Yeah. But Put anyway, a great, oil great clippers. Great and I told you that Felco, you can buy parts for. Yeah. So if you oh, really? want to buy a new blade or some a other spring part, or something, yeah, can, uh, go ahead. And then I don't know if we've mentioned this in a long time, but the whole tip for for people that actually know how to keep their tools right um, properly, you know, unlike us on this program, but people that actually invest in keeping their tools up. But a um, like a bucket of sand with some oil, and you put the tools in there, right? It keeps the 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 blades, you know, from rusting and oil the the shears. Like ten forty weight? Is that what we're talking about? We're, no, they use like like just um, olive oil. Yeah, no <laughs> extra extra virgin <laughs> no. olive oil. No, they use like a, like a motor oil kind of an oil or something. Just they just an oily like an oil. They just want it to be like an oily sand, and that's supposed to really keep hmm. the okay. shears from rusting and keep them um, you know healthier than what. Yeah, it's I think it's the them. relationship between the sand and the oil. Yeah. Well, would you ever notice uh, after an oil spill, people go to the beach and they and get those buckets and they've got their pruning <laughs> shears with them? And yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah it's and a they're, frenzy. They're, they're washing ducks with right. Dawn detergent. <laughs> oh, gosh. Rick, uh, who had mentioned get collecting seeds, says it takes about five years to bloom from a uh, camellia seed. Oh, it takes a camellia yeah. to bloom after you plant it? Uh, at least in his years. experience. Wow. And then um, uh, Carolyn says she had uh, some camellia seeds germinate, and one plant's now five feet tall. Ooh, has it bloomed? You don't mm-hmm. think of um, camellias coming up from seed normally, do you? No. They, I mean, it, we talk about this, Southern California being a huge avasa- uh, avocado region, Fallbrook. We don't have avocado trees popping up in our parks and right. open space. You know, and camellias are one of those things that you just don't see them randomly growing right. throughout the area. Yeah. Do are there areas? I mean, where would that happen at? The camellias, where they would just yeah, pop like, up from like, seed. Yeah, like a weed. Just there. Yeah. Look yeah. at that. Probably in Asia. Just, just there, right? China. Yeah. Nowhere in North America. Well, I'm sure they're they'd be coming up in Descanso Gardens or the Huntington from see, seed. Yeah. I've never seen it. Yeah. And you know, when was the last time you were at either one of those gardens? <laughs> well, you bring up a very good point. <laughs> it's hard to see. I'm, I'm talking about opening my, my back door. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nothing yet. <laughs> Nothing yet. I'll check back tomorrow. We have a, a bird watching question for Tiger. Okay. Gina wants to know she's watching robins eating the seeds of her flowering pear tree. Okay. She wants to know if they need anything extra this time of year. <laughs> Good question. Did you, did you quote the Bible verse that talks about how God feeds the sparrows and the birds and <laughs> not to worry about what you'll wear or what you'll eat or drink? It said it's sparrows, though. I don't know about robins. Oh, yeah. okay. And so is there, <laughs> is, there, is there a question more for the robins, if there's anything else that they need, or for the uh, flowering pear? Is this the red, red robin that comes ba ba bombing along? <laughs> it could be. Tiger knows that song, right? No. no. <laughs> the red, red robin comes ba ba bombing along. Maybe I might have heard that at Corvette Diner one time when Shotgun Tom Kelly was there. But you know what? Mwah, baby. You <laughs> exactly. know what? That's so funny. I, I learned all my music from the Corvette Diner. Yeah. <laughs> 60s and 70s. I think you should put out uh, – they usually uh, – there's different thoughts of it, but a lot of times they'll tell you not to feed birds in the fall if they're supposed to migrate mm-hmm. because if there's plenty of food there – Why would they go Whether anywhere? that's true or not, I don't know. 
But once they're there and you're well into winter, I, I think that, you know, putting out some bird feed, it's a great idea. Yeah. Remember, uh, was it Scott's where they were, dem we were back there in, uh, yeah. was that Ohio too? Yeah, they had their own ornithologist, right? Right, and, and different bird seeds for different areas or yeah. regions of that. the country. Yeah. And it was fascinating. You know, you just don't take any bird seed and think that every bird's going to want to eat it. Yeah, right? not all birds eat sunflower seeds and Niger seed. They, they have right. to do different You found mixes. that out the hard way. <laughs> However, virtually no birds eat, uh, is it Milo? Is that the filler? Yeah, yeah the, oh, the because filler. that's all that's left over. Yeah, it, that's like that's like when yes. you create a plate for your child, and it has a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's got some chips and like a yogurt, and then you put some carrots, and they're just everything's eaten except for the carrots. Carrots are the filler. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like that's what it is for birds. But um, uh, it made me think of um. For birds and for bird seeds, um, just that it's it's neat to be able to see what gets attracted to your yard because there's birds sometimes that you didn't even know you had in your mm -hmm. region that will come when you have food out for them because I mean there are these we have the we I, I think I said in the past we had I let these sunflower seeds I planted let, them. And let's they take let a break grow. so we okay. can hear the whole story here. All right, because my two favorite birds, which we don't see here, cardinals and orioles. Okay, right? Not here. I don't think they live. Right, John? You're a big bird guy, right? I don't think they live. Baltimore here. orioles. There you go. We're going <laughs> to talk about that. We do see a lot of orioles here. <laughs> going to talk about that and more. You can tell me where okay. after this break on Biz Talk Radio. Okay, we are back. This is our final segment. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning as we prepare ourselves in our garden for January, February, and the rest of the winter months, head, months heading into spring before you know it, in March. It'll happen. It's going to be It's going to happen. So back to your story, Tiger, before the break. So I had these sunflowers growing, and I just let them go to seed. And then one day I went out there, and maybe John doesn't know, but Brian, I know there's flocks of wild parrots here. Yeah, in Ocean in, Beach especially. In, in Ocean Beach in San Diego. Yep. Yep. That whole flock, probably like 150 birds, were all in my backyard just having away at these sunflower flowers that had gone to seed. We're talking tropical birds, parrots, Green, right? Green, orange beaks, yeah. squawking just like parrots. They were having the time of their life in my backyard, and I had never seen them before. I've seen them in Ocean Beach. I've seen them right. cruising around. Right, right. I had never seen them in my area, and they were having the time of you their know, life in my backyard. You know, they do quite well here, even though they're not – from here, the, these parrots. I felt like I was in Cabo or Cancun right. or someplace. And, and you know what? They they can devastate other birds. Other oh, birds really? don't have a chance against, against them. a parrot. Parrot, yeah, parrot. Savage, huh? big, huge beaks and stuff. And they're well. These ones are smaller, you know. But you know, in Australia, cockatoos are wild, and there's actually bounties on cockat cockatoos because <laughs> they can a whole they can rip roofs off houses. Really? Yeah, they're. Uh, we had a lot of tropical birds. Uh, when I grew up, they attack koalas, right? <laughs> what doesn't attack a koala? Well, you know, koalas prey. I think really smell bad too. Koalas, they're easy somebody prey. said they're, they're cute, but they stink. Well, they never bathe; they're <laughs> stuck up in those trees. <laughs> um, Tanya wants to know if you prune iceberg roses like any other rose, and if you're in California, by the way, now it's time to start pruning roses. Yep. Um, and icebergs it depends if they're in an area where you need to keep them small go ahead but the less you prune an iceberg the more flowers you're going to get the larger the plant yeah they're one of they're, they're like a, a normal plant in your yard where you prune to shape versus prune right. to bloom like a right. hybrid tea rose right yeah you don't cut definitely don't cut them back hard like a hybrid yeah. tea and the reason i don't see orioles in my area john apparently you do uh, in Fallbrook, we get Orioles all the time. The yellow, bright yellow? Yeah, kind of orange. orange. Orioles are orange. Yeah. What are the ones that are more yellow? Canaries. Black, black and yellow. <laughs> you know, those, that's the Sparrows. Canary Island. You're thinking of the Canary Islands. Sparrow, right? <laughs> the black and yellow? No, ones? the sparrows are like brown, right? Yeah. Finches, yeah. those kind of things. Finch. Yeah. 
Finch, Finch is yellow. Right. Are they, no, Finch aren't yellow. Goldfinch. Okay. Did you ever hear of a Goldfinch? Yeah, it's near where Tiger's Nursery is. Yeah. There you go. Um, you got to be quick on this show. Yeah. Wow. But we don't have Cardinals here, do we? No, we don't have Cardinals. No, here. no Cardinals. No. Cardinals. no. Yeah. I, lo- I, I love Cardinals. I lo- yeah. Beautiful. If I ever saw a red bird here in San Diego, that'd scare me. Because I don't think I've seen no. a red bird. I've seen parrots. I've seen Orioles. I've seen bluebirds. I've seen all the finches and sparrows and all Blue that. Blue Jays? We don't have the, the Eastern Blue Jay, but we have we, California Jays yeah, or Mexican have, Jays, they call them, right? I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I know we do have them. Yeah. Yeah. But the... the Woodpeckers? Yeah, I have all kinds of woodpeckers yeah. at my house. Really? Yeah, and they oh, come in... Uh, my daughter gave me a bird bath, I think, for my birthday one year, and it's set up over there, and they come at the same time every day, the... And they'll come three or four at a time, but only one drinks at a time. The others watch Your to make sure nothing is going to bo- bother that one, and then they take turns. No, I don't see any woodpeckers in my area. Do you? No, no, but we but we don't live in areas that John's in a whole other zone. John's yeah. in a whole other area. His, the woodpeckers in his neighborhood are actually, you know, well, we have a lot of hawks. Woods and uh, yeah, we have a lot of hawks and uh, the sure. a lot of birds in the area. Yeah, falcons. Mm, I don't know about falcons. No bald eagles either. No, no. They owls, all have owls, owls though. I love Those owls. Are fun. I love owls. I love owls. Yeah. I haven't heard good. the owls for a while, but okay. we used to have a lot of owls. Could, you, could we have like an owl feeder that just maybe dangles a mouse? Like you know, you know, like you'd have a bird feeder. You can have an owl feeder. There are owl feeders. What? As, in know. fact, we were out. Um, there's all there's houses. houses. Ha, ha, yeah, that's what I mean to, meant yeah. to say. We were hiking in Tierra Santa, you know, back in the woods of, of Tierra Santa, the undeveloped areas. And every now and then you see one of those. Yeah, they have owl yeah, houses. Owl houses, yeah. yeah. Not a feeder. Not a feeder. Yeah. <laughs> um. So a lot of people are mentioning about the Orioles they see here. Uh, Patty says they're hooded Orioles. Oh. Oh, they got their hoodie on. Yeah. That's why you that's, can't I tell. Can't, yeah. Mm. It's hard to see their little faces. <laughs> <laughs> and Lenore sees them out in Canyon Country. All right. Yeah. Well, hey, Orioles, you're invited to come to our place in Scripps Ranch if you want to hang out for a while. We've got a bird feeder. We've got uh, – we feed the hummingbirds. Cats like to watch the birds. I oh, put on yeah. this um, – did I, did I tell you to show you the video? Yeah. So we, you put on like 12K, 10, you know, beautiful scenery of birds feeding and squirrels and – and our cats are like, what the heck is this? Like you're looking out a window? Yeah, they're watching the TV. Yeah. So the one gets up on this big scratching post, which is next to the TV, and the cat looks behind the TV. He's like, how does this work? <laughs> <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Yeah. But, yeah, they're mesmerized. Yeah. I mean, let's be real. If, if you didn't know better and somebody put you in front of a beautiful cheeseburger and you can't smell it, yeah. you can't feel it, you can't touch it, like, wait a minute. The, the whole point of those is to, is to demonstrate, demonstrate how clear the picture is. <laughs> you know, they just all these beautiful sceneries of birds and lizards and lakes and streams. And, and the whole point is, like, look how clear this picture is. Yeah. Well, the cats can see it, obviously. So funny. Okay, we've got about a minute and a half, guys. That's, That's it? it? Yeah. Rick wanted to know real quick, should he start preparing his uh, garden bed now? You know, you can add mulch any time of the year. Up yep. there, you know, it's still so cold that there's, you know, it's a good time to add stuff. But mm-hmm. uh, if you want to just top it and so when the spring is ready to go, stuff's going to start coming up. One minute. One minute, gentlemen. Um, that's, I guess that's about it. And what's happening next week? Do we have a guest? N- uh, we were going to do John's next week, but. We said no, so um, no, right. not yet. And then John's gone the week after, so we're pushing right. now into February for at for John's the library house. for the library. Yeah, first part of February. Yeah, I know. I just, just caught, lost it. I just I caught know. that too. Well, okay, there you yeah. go. Hey, Lenore says quick. <laughs> um, and the I when I would have uh, bird feeders out there, I'd always put some peanuts out for the blue jays. Oh, they nice. would come and they'd grab or those the specifically. Okay, we have to go. Thank you so much for joining us again. Those on Biz Talk Radio, those of you on Facebook Live, we'll do it again next week. You said John is gone next week. 
No, not no. next week. The week, week after. after. I'm so here we're next all here week. next week. Okay. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have a great week, and we'll do it again next week right here on Garden America. Take care.